an idea. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. There, there you go. go. Is that one? Cheers. Cheers, guys. Whoa. We've got the Cheers. Uh, the corner angle, which makes it easier for passers-by to steal my laptop. <laughs> yeah, someone could literally just drive by and just yoink it. <laughs> do you think that? Do you think that could happen in Budapest? I is mean, that, in, South Afri- in South Africa. In yeah, South yeah. Africa, it would totally course. happen, wouldn't it? What would happen if this was happening right now? Yeah, it's a big opportunity for somebody. It would Let's last, it would it last how long? Five five minutes? Yeah, someone... Not even. Like, realistically, someone will come past and be like, that's a good opportunity. I mean, you're talking about the home of hijackings, right? That's yeah, like where yeah, hijackings no were invented. Man, of course. <laughs> wouldn't take long for somebody to say, that's an easy opportunity. Yeah. Just grab a laptop <laughs> yeah. and run. I know it sounds and funny, but it's true. And we a few seconds so you before we're all it. up on our feet and chasing him. You deserve it if you're going to be this bra- this cavalier. In South Africa? You yeah. You deserve it to be You stolen. wouldn't see it. Yeah, no, no. Like, it's it's you wouldn't see it. It's an insult. The problem is, they would just grab yeah. it and go, so they probably end up, like, ra- yanking the cables out of the rest of the rig and taking it with them. They've got to yank all of this out. And then they've got to keep sprinting and they've got to outsprint me. And you know me, I'm Tom Cruise. Uh, yep, yep, you're a pretty fast sprinter. I think the only once difference is... Once you're up on your feet, uh, once you're up on your feet, You guys are talking about this like hypothetically. I've seen this happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Let's leave it at that. Like, it's gone. Would you even bother chasing it? Yeah, you try, you try. But the thing is, once I get those few <laughs> seconds head start effort, yeah, on dude, you... A token effort, like... <laughs> trust me, if you think about it, right? Think about it this way. We're sitting here having a good time, having a few drinks... We relaxed, everything's cool. There's somebody on the other side of the road watching this opportunity, as I said before. They're getting ready. And they're ready. They're they ready have the for element of surprise. Exactly. They're, they're, they've already sounded out a, yeah, man. a call to the crew. All right, so here's the whole strategy. Dude, of course, of course. I've and been watching them for a couple they've of got hours. A plan. The laptop's sitting there. Dude, you they've got a plan. You run past, you run past, you honk the horn. As they're looking, I'll run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah dude, by the time you, you realize what's going on, their plan is already in like the sixth phase <laughs> out of seven. You know what I mean? Like the seventh phase is to sell whatever they've stolen. Well, lucky we've, so, got, yeah. lucky we've got Asa here to... No, I think I would, I would like... It would be cool if you said, we in Budapest, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. I don't Budapest. think there's anything to worry about. I don't think anyone's going to come past and grip your... Did you hear that? The I South Africans so. starting to actually feel the vibe of the city and realize it's not as dangerous as... He said himself. Yeah, Budapest is no Joburg, I have to say. You don't get the same yeah, you, shit happening you've been here. There, yeah, you get yeah. I mean, you live there. You no, know what's up. Joburg. Not Joburg. You didn't live in Joburg. Oh, okay, but South Africa in general. <laughs> My experience yeah. with Joburg. Yeah, yeah, But exactly. I, can, I can see this happening literally anywhere in South Africa. Yeah, though. Yeah, Joburg's hectic. Like, I don't know. People quite, aren't quite as brazen. This is the home of pickpocketing and uh, yeah, yeah, tax yeah, evasion. Yeah, yeah. This is too much work. <laughs> tax evasion. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Asa. Oh, thank you. I see you're doing a very good job. Did you get your chicken wing payment? <laughs> No, not yet. It only just started work. He's not even been at work for an hour. <laughs> I love how diligent he is. It's like a he is not saying anything. He's just doing his job, ignoring oh. everything that's happening unless it's got something yeah. to do. Bus boy. <laughs> I thought you, I thought your security is a. He's both. When there's nothing to do with security, he helps with clearing stuff. He, you can tell, like he's just focused on the job. <laughs> he just wants to get out, shit done. Out, he, get he, shit done. I imagine he's, he's a good egg. He's, he's a, good, a egg. good egg in that regard. In that regard. Oh, where's the pink lighter? We need the pink lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's there on there the table. There it is. All right. Jim. 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 Can you pass us the pink lighter? Yes. So, babe, today's been pretty. Uh, pretty it's chill. Pretty, been pretty chill, but I reckon it's gonna. I mean, we're yeah, full I mean, what's already. Yeah, now? It's. 7.40. Yeah, dude, we were at Namafa today. That was cool. That I was, was telling him about cool. the, the child uh, railway station. The railway, yeah, yeah. railway station. Uh, we the saw railway like track. a red tram type of looking thing. <coughs> yeah. I don't know if it, it looked like the M1. No, the M1's yellow, isn't it? This one know, runs but it was red. Hills. It it's looked beautiful. like it's old. Yeah, yeah. Journey, so man. sick, yeah. It's a beautiful journey. You get some really nice uh, view of the hills and stuff. They went to the top of the, you know, where we went. And uh, we did the chairlift. Oh, there's a chair. Yeah, there's yeah, chair we saw running. the chairlift. Yeah, it's running, I man. It's yeah, I, saw I, reckon today, it's running. Yeah. I reckon it's running. I can't imagine. Yeah, because it's only yeah, it's only two people per seat. I mean, how much more social distance can you get? Yeah, we saw it get? going on. We didn't get on it, but uh, it was there. It was happening. And also no, a lot a really of guys nice on uh, down your bicycles, <laughs> like you know. So you, uh, you got on a bicycle? No. Do you do you know what a downhill bicycle is? Like to smash downhills, big oh, really? shocks in the front. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I like that type of stuff. Going really fast down hills, big jumps, big. Yeah, my brother's uh, really so fast. Yeah, that, 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 that was scared the shit out of me. When you grow up in South Africa, you need to get the adrenaline running in other oh, ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you, you're so conditioned. To exactly. Have, yeah, yeah, you got drive-by shootings every yeah. day. You need are, to try and keep things are keep, too yeah, easy. Keep your they, reflexes. Exactly. Up. You gotta you, if you you, you you rest on your laurels here. <laughs> you you, you, you got to keep your adrenaline running somehow. Take it easy. It's too relaxed here after run down a hill on a bike. <laughs> I need to risk my life. I have life. to feel like I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you do yours, babe? I love it. Listen to her. You just uh, said, risk Yasmin, my life. You sound exactly like Yasmin's a South African accent is <laughs> very life. specific. Yeah. It's very yeah, it specific. Sounded, I mean, when, whenever you put on. me on the point, I can't do it. it. It comes out every now and then. It's like Tourette's. I have South African Tourette's. But when yeah. I try and put on a South African accent, it never goes well. I always yeah. end up either sounding Australian or, oh, there's my brother. <laughs> hey, yeah, literally. Ah, good Where timing. Are you going? Where are you good going? Good timing. Aza, <laughs> you're a walk horse. You're a walk horse. You're a workhorse, my friend. A walk horse. When I work, I'm focused. Yeah, I tell them two things. I'm like, if there's crowd inside, watch the crowd. If there's no crowd inside, help out and clear up issues. And that's what he's doing. Shame, there's Tara sitting by herself. Ace. I know, man. Fuck, and I'm, ter I'm terrible. With an espresso. Oi, Tara. Tara. Come here, come here. Jump in, jump in. Yeah. No, no, serious, come here. Take over my earphones at least. Come on. Hey, Josh, run away. You make her feel welcome, all right? I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'll try. Yes, she's pretty accommodating as well. You're going to leave us. <laughs> Ew, you have You're going to leave us. I don't need myself. Josh, you're you can't leave us. You're going to have to initiate like the conversation. Myself, Otherwise, it's non existent. I think my voice sounds weird. Yeah. Here, Josh, do you come in here? I'm here. Okay, he's I'm just going to get a <laughs> yeah, anyway. She's a good co-host. So, Tara, tell us about Ireland and the gypsies. You've lived in all sorts of places. Are you joking? Shame, she feels like... She's already getting stage fright and she's not even on camera. Look, you can see the side of her face. It's okay, Tara, it's okay. No one's going to judge you. No one's going to... Yeah, no one's going to worry. All right, Tara, if you could warn a random person that you meet about one thing about Ireland, what would be the one thing you'd warn about? Like, the one thing, don't do this in Ireland. If you go to Ireland, don't do this one thing. Oh, I've got one. You got one? Um, in Ireland, you went for a round. You went to Ireland. Um, Spit. Spit? Yeah. I know a lot of, like... Sometimes if we have a drink and tourists, like in Ireland, you say, like, what's the crack? Yeah. Like you say, where's the crack? Where's the crack? Where's the fun? crack is, like, crack's okay. So if someone walks up to you in Ireland, they say, what's the crack, man? Where's the crack? And, like, don't don't pull out your crack. They're not supposed to pull out the crack. They're just saying, like, what's up? I think that's the most common, like, conception. Or also, people often say, like, yeah. Uh, you know, sit there and just go watch the area. It's really fun. In Ireland, they say, like, if you meet a girl and, like, you go home with her, they always say, like, oh, like, did you have a bit of how's your father? <laughs> and, what? And sometimes Why, what? people are like, Why? what is that? <laughs> yeah. I've never heard uh, that one. Yeah, yeah, often people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you have a bit of how's your father? Did you have a bit of how's your father? How's your father? <laughs> <laughs> like, did you, were you a bit, like, I don't know. <laughs> Were you a bit intimate? But I know it's a really How strange. does my father tie into this situation? Yeah, That's just creepy. People often say, like, did you have a bit of how's your father? And that means, like, did you get lucky? Like, did you Did you, score, did you bang? Did yeah. you bang? Did you pull? Did you pull, mate? Where I'm from, we say, <laughs> Go on, tell us. What do you say? What but, uh, do you say? Yeah, that's what, that's what people mean. Josh, do you want to pass me my tobacco? Sorry. What's, what's, what, is, what is the one drink that someone might recommend to you that you should absolutely not have? Like that one drink that locals are like, oh, you've got, you've got to try it. It's local stuff. You're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love it. You can't come to Ireland and not have a, a pint of this oh, or a yeah, glass yeah, of that or a shot good. or whatever. What is that one drink? Um, I don't know if there is like a drink in Ireland that I wouldn't recommend, but I know when I've been abroad, 
lot of people say like, oh, you're Irish, you must have the Irish car bomb. So often when people go to Ireland, they order like an Irish car bomb. And people often don't know that that's super offensive because of the troubles in Northern Ireland. And like, I haven't heard of this one, yeah. You, can actually, you can't actually order it. That is no, not it's really not a thing. Ireland, so yeah, it's an American or, thing. It's or, not an Irish thing. I live, we have a lot of Americans that order an Irish car bomb in an Irish pub. And they don't know what they're talking about. They just think they're like... <laughs> so, you want an Irish car bomb? It isn't All right, I'll tell you what, I punch you in the face and polish like, an Irish not, car bomb. How's that? It's not super offensive, but like, we just don't have that drink. But a lot of Americans always think, like, oh, you must eat Lucky Charms, which you don't even have, and like, you must drink like Irish car bombs in the evening, which we also don't have. <laughs> you must all wear green all the time and prance around like a bunch uh, of fairies. We have, a, we have a shot, like, I think it's called, and they also have like a suicide shot where you like, you put like lemon in your eye and like snort the. Oh, the suicide. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should never do that. Oh no, I've, I've, I've uh, <laughs> unfortunately no. recommended that to many, many people. Not because yeah, we're Irish, really yeah. but because we're just sadistic. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's, it's always it's fun. Funny because um, obviously Tara, well, not obviously, but Tara is my girlfriend from Ireland. I'm from South Africa, but I do have an Irish passport. An Irish passport, do you? I do. Yeah, I do. Oh, uh, at recent useful. times. Thanks to you, Irish well, yeah, girlfriend. It's fucking <laughs> useful enough to get me into Budapest. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been great. But uh, my granddad's from Ireland as well. And um, my brother and I used to go to a pub in Nelspreit, which is in the, the arse end of nowhere in Africa. <laughs> and, it, is a, uh, it is a pretty nothing town. I've yeah, there's there. fuck all there. It's, it's a cool place, but it, yeah, there's fuck all there. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, You've got to celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying this is a big day for her. What's yeah. what's the big day? Oh. What's why is it a big day? Go on, Tara. She looks the very big day confused. was yesterday, but oh, oh yesterday I, I came to Budapest because I wanted to study veterinary medicine, and yesterday it was accepted. So oh, I suppose that's fun. that it's yeah, today's a big day. That's oh, a big day. It's <laughs> yeah. a very big day. Yeah. 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 Chasing the dream. So I, I do have to warn you about that veterinary school. They have a very very nasty habit of flunking the international students on purpose. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to get you to pay more money I to repeat yeah. again, again, and again. So I mean, you know, try your best. But if they start flunking, you don't fall for it. No. Don't fall for it. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah. I mean, th there's been getting a lot more press now. Like this, yeah. the past few months, not just Budapest, but like the same has been going on in universities in Poland, and it's been getting a lot of press. So I, I have to think they're going to stop doing that soon I because. Think they realize that if they if they have a lot of international students, like. Um, Europeans and Asians, like a lot of Chinese students, Japanese students, like they're willing to pay the fees. I think they've just seen it as like, honestly, like a big cash cow yeah. for the university. So I know they take a lot of, they, they accept a lot more students than they should. They yeah. don't actually meet the criteria that you should, but they pay the fees. So. Right, yeah, yeah, I've heard that they only have like a certain number of people that they can actually pass into like the fourth year, fifth year. Yeah, I guess because yeah. that's when you have to do all your practicals and then you need a certain amount of Money's equipment. King. From Money's second king. to third year, there's only 40% of the students that go through. So wow. there's a 60% dropout. Wow. From second to third year. So that's mad. Obviously, I'm quite worried about that. But, I, but no, I was in Ireland, I did a lot of practical experience and I met a lot of students that successfully graduated from there and I think the issue is they take a lot of students that English isn't their first language and they're not proficient in English so they're not able to like fulfill the criteria right but they know that when they accept them but they still accept it anyway because it's money right yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well, I, I had my interview, and the man was super nice, and he was lovely and everything. But like, like one day later, it's like, okay, pay this, pay this, don't pay this, don't pay this. This is just like, give me your money. Yeah. <laughs> pay everything pay up front. Pay everything now. It's and like, then pay maybe we'll yeah. accept it's you. Like, you need to do the exam. It's so much money to do the exam on Zoom. To do the exam to get in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But yeah, we've been on a long road. It's been a long, a long while coming. Like all this yeah. falling together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been, been crazy. Let's see. That's Andy's mum. That's Andy's mum. We Andy's just seen mom? Andy's mum. Oh, Andy's mum oh. is in half, guys. Yeah. Andy Candy's mum just came to half. Do we, do we have her on screen? I can't see the screen right now. I can't oh, see she looks screen. pretty serious. So Andy Candy. Uh, 
Oh, let's see. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. It's a family reunion. Her sister's here. Her I like her mom's jacket. Too. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Her little sister and her mom are both here. Yeah. Her mom's jacket's awesome. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. sick jacket. Oh, I think I know where she got that as well. I know the shop where oh, she got that no from. Oh, no way. It's joking. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. Oh, she's very Andy. <laughs> Just looking at her, I'm like, yeah, you're Andy's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. mom. <laughs> so tell us about um, Half House, Yes. I've enjoyed the story and I've enjoyed how it came to be. and um, Which yeah, I literally I just told 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it a lot because I asked, actually asked Josh when I first came here. I was like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? I was like trying to figure out why is uh, why are we coming to this place? What's it all about? Whatever. And Josh told me about it. But I think um, there was a lot of people and maybe it got like, you know, I didn't get the full story. So 10 minutes ago, you told me the story. And I okay. think it's fucking cool. Like it's, it's, it's one of the coolest stories. I've heard in a long while. Let's it's it a pretty way. crazy and impulsive the story, story. Just watch the stream 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, was it already on 10 minutes ago? Yeah. Cheers, thank you. Okay, all right. So we're not going to repeat the story. Sorry, okay, <laughs> I'll worry. tell you the story of how David and I met. That's an, that's an even more fun story, actually. Yeah, I'd just like to hear some sort of story because um, so I like business and I like... We like stories. Think, yeah, and I like yeah? stories. Stories so make for great it. business. Half yeah. House is all about telling exactly. stories. Exactly. That's why I'm here. Over let's a drink, in a microphone, whatever you want. Uh, so, story of how I met David. Uh, drum roll, Tinder. <laughs> but this was back. <laughs> this was back okay. when uh, Tinder used to tell you how many mutual friends you have uh, on Facebook, right? So you'd be logged what? in. What Tinder? Your, yeah. Okay, there, there, yeah. There was a time before I mean, privacy Tinder issues. Noob, and, but whatever, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I joined Tinder back in 2015 or something. Okay. And um, so I met David. I think end of 2017, we matched on Tinder, mm -hmm. and I saw that we had sh we had like 36 mutual friends on Facebook. Oh, wow, uh, and yeah. I started That's scrolling through his pictures and like his pictures were just freaking ridiculous. He had this like stupid ass mustache in one of them that was like curled <laughs> up. His last oh, picture, yeah, okay. I shit you not, he was wearing nothing but a sombrero and a cock sock. Like he was completely <laughs> butt naked with his with his junk Sounds wrapped like up a party, yeah. in a neon orange, I think it was, cock sock mm -hmm. <laughs> at Seagate Festival. And I was like, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How have I not met him yet? Yeah. This guy needs to be in my Sounds life. Sounds like somebody, yeah, exactly. You need him in your life. <laughs> I need him in my life. I was like, all right, let's meet up for a drink. I stipulated this is not a date <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. I just well, really want to meet, meet you. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fair uh, enough. So we met up. I think like I had somewhere else to go that night because I had another birthday to get to. But we met up for a couple of drinks in like in uh, Elato Carrot back when it was still open. Um, that was my favorite Tinder spot, by the way, just because like it okay. was chill. You could sit outside and smoke. They had great cocktails. They had a pool table, you know, for like extra entertainment. You know, it was a really, really great place for like your first Tinder meetup. There was yeah, sure. usually okay. space if you went early enough. So we met up there, had a couple of drinks, instantly hit it off. We ex started exchanging ideas and like, you know, stories about like different business ideas that we've had. And, you know, he'd also tried to dabble in the pub crawl business himself. And, you know, he'd done, okay. a, he'd done a lot of work with immigrants and everything. So, you know, we kind of bonded over that because my, my, my parents, that's what they did for years and years is, okay. is, is uh, you know, work with human capital development. And they did a lot with the immigration crisis as well. So we bonded over a whole lot of things sat and had, you know, one or two drinks over the course of two, three hours. Um, it might have actually been like four or five knowing me and David. <laughs> and then I, I went off on my, my merry old way to, uh, to this birthday party. And then after the birthday party, we all went to Retox and ran into him there as well. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I literally never met you. And now yeah. I've seen you twice, twice in one night. Yeah, yeah. So it was a sign. It was a sign, it, yeah. it was a sign we were meant if to be friends. If it is ever yeah. a sign, that was it, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that was a pretty fun story. And so, yeah, yeah that was a couple years ago. And... Um, yeah, and then we formed this wolf pack with two two other uh, girls in our crew, and yeah. we went traveling together, did festivals together, and stuff. And so, yeah, pretty pretty inseparable. Oh, I like it. I just like a story like this. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's really cool. And it seems like now at the moment, half house, a lot of people coming going, and a lot of people you guys know. So you know what I mean? It's like a, I mean your friend. Yeah, your friends keep it's it. It's nice to cool. like your regulars. Keep it, yeah, yeah. Your you got your regulars, regulars and they, they they come and go. And it's a good vibe. Yeah. Definitely like awesome vibe. Yeah. I just like the business side of it. I've I've done been through the business side of things and started a few companies myself actually. Yeah. And yeah. Tell us about your companies. What companies have oh, you started? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jeez. Now you got me. Yeah. On this. <laughs> got me live. Um, Started with a, a milk, like a, it was kind of like a dairy delivery company. A milk delivery company? Yeah, with a good friend of mine, Paul Stunder, my best mate. And um, we started this, I went to university and I studied um, 
political sciences and international relations. And I didn't really like it, to be honest. So after like a year, I left and we started this business. That didn't work out. It was a bad business, very bad. And uh, yeah, we learned the hard way, but it was cool. And then uh, we went into some furniture. We started selling furniture and stuff like this. So dairy to furniture. Okay, yeah. big jump. <laughs> the furniture side was because uh, the mate that I'm talking about, Paul, his dad was into furniture and he was retired at the time. He'd done, done his thing, but we had some good contacts, so we thought we'd give it a bash. And it just, yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't too good. So we'll leave it at that. But yeah, it was okay. It was actually fine, but it wasn't great. And then we started a tile company, like floor tiles and... Okay, so yeah. dairy to furniture to floor tiling. Yeah. All right, it gets yeah. more and more eclectic as you go on. <laughs> Boom, yeah, I know. Fine. Into everything. But yeah, that business actually worked out very well. And that's what my mate does to this day. So the business we kind of started together. And that's what he does to this day. And he's a pretty successful dude. Gets on, does well. And uh, yeah, so he's got a few shops now, like he's expanded out and he's doing well for himself, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we started that we started that shit together, it was tough, it was a lot of work, seven days a week for that's, yeah, that's how it is a long time. Business, yeah, man. of course, yeah. yeah. We, you don't take a salary, you work, you work like overtime yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I took a salary, but it was like peanuts, man. Honestly, like it was a, a, a joke Dylan, type of thing. Dylan, Oh, thanks. Oh, you, got you got one. I did. It's okay, oh, it's now I've got two. Uh, got so, not to ask you the b most you know, boring and repeated question of all time, but what made you move here to Budapest? Okay, so, shit. Um, when I finished up, uh, we were busy with the tile company, and it was going well, everything was going cool, but I decided I can't work seven days a week and have like five days off a year. I need to find something to do. My mom's a school teacher, and I was like, fuck, this is cool. Being a school teacher is pretty cool, it's a good job. It's entertaining, like, you know, it keeps you going. And I want to use it to travel. At the time, I just had a South African passport. And uh, I'm sure you know yours. It's not a great passport The Green to Mamba, have. yeah, it's no. terrible. So you can't, like... <laughs> the Green Mamba. <laughs> yeah, the, the Green Mamba, it's terrible. And at the same time, you wouldn't have... I wouldn't have had time to travel, and I wouldn't have really had money to travel. So I thought, let me study to be a teacher, and uh, I'll use this to my benefit and try to travel the world teaching abroad, you know? Right, yeah. And that's what I did. And my first job I uh, picked up was in Saudi Arabia at an international school, a really good international school, British international school. And uh, my mom was working overseas in Saudi Arabia at the time, so it kind of opened a few doors for me. It definitely helped me to get like a few interviews, let's put it that way. And I uh, had a few interviews, got a job there, off I went. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go teach abroad and then travel as much as I can, which I did. Traveled quite a bit, more than I ever had before. And I was like, sweet, I'm just gonna keep doing this. This is cool. Fair, yeah. yeah. Any job that allows you the opportunity to travel? Yeah, yeah. It's a cut above the rest, as far as I'm concerned. And just over three years ago, three plus years ago, I met Tara in Saudi Arabia. And we were both teaching at a school there. And um, yeah, we kicked off pretty quick, you know, like, Got to know Did each you do other. A bit of who's your father? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'll keep that to myself. But yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Gentleman never kisses and tells. Uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. And you know, we met each other there and was, we got to know each other. Everything was going good. And we've been together ever since. So, like, over three years now. And um, she wanted to study to be a vet. That's what she'd been saving up for her whole life. And that's what she wants to do. And I was like, sweet, I think that's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. You've got a, you got a passion, you've got something you want to work towards. And uh, we kind of looked for a place where she could study, I could work, you know, we could have a good life. Because Saudi Arabia is like, yeah, it's not... It's challenging there, well, it's it? difficult, yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. There's nothing to do, there's nothing... There's all kinds there's of rules nothing to about it. behavior in public. Like it's yeah, you get paid a lot of money, but there's always a reason for that, let's be serious. Yeah. You get paid a lot yeah. because... There's nothing there, so like you know, you get paid a shitload of money to just not to teach and then not yeah, really have much was, of a life outside. Yeah, there's no that. life. There's no. There's nothing like you can't drink alcohol in Saudi Arabia. You can't like you know, it's just a, it's just like hot and sandy and just shit. Honestly, like honestly, <laughs> and full yeah. of trash. Yeah, and like, like Saudi Arabia doesn't know what to do. There's prayers seven times a day. 
and yeah, to Muslim people, fair play, whatever it is, like that's you do you, you, and I'll do me type of thing, whatever, you know, like I've got nothing against it. But seven times a day and everything closes, you know what I mean? Like everything's closed all the time, and there's prayer times and blah, blah. So if you could so, live yeah, anywhere, blah, blah, blah. If, you, so, if you could live anywhere in the world, where do you reckon you'd want to live? It could be somewhere you've already been to, it could be somewhere completely new. That you're I reckon, just... yeah, probably, I've never been there, but New Zealand is probably where I'd like to go. I think it's uh, similar to, you know, you have your people, like South African people, the way they are, like, we particular in a way, you know, the way we operate. And I think New Zealanders are similar. The landscape's pretty similar. Yeah, it gets pretty cold there. We're not used to cold. But yeah, I think New Zealand would be the place. I'm not sure though. I'm, I'm, I'm up for... Have you ever been to New Zealand? Excuse me? Have you ever been to New Zealand? I've never been there, no. Well, but I know a lot of people that have, have, have gone over and they never came back or well, to South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, I don't know. I'm open. I'm like pretty open. I've, I've, I mean, we're here in Budapest right now. I have no plan on leaving. I think it's fucking awesome, yeah. It's a pretty cool city. It's kind of got everything you need in one, I mean, one yeah, it's cool. It's cool. neat little, you know, post-Soviet, post-war torn. I'm looking up these buildings up here. Yeah, yeah. Really no, but pretty. it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. And I like the fact that you're safe all the time. I know we keep banging on about this, but it's, it's true. Like, I know you guys like to have a bit of a laugh, but for, you know, when you're there, it's a different ball game. Like, you know what I mean? If you're not, like, I have this thing where I can't not sleep if I don't lock the door. And like Tara is like, what the fuck? Like, you know, she doesn't get like it. Like the I bedroom just door. Can't do it. Yeah, no, like the front door. You the know, front like, door, yeah. gotta lock the front door. Gotta close the doors. Make sure everything's secure. The windows must be closed. You know. I mean, yeah, I do it, that too. Thing, I grew up in Africa. Yeah, as well, yeah. So exactly. You know what I'm thing. talking about. Yeah. You have to. You have yeah. to. There's no like, you know, if 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 there's a door unlocked, and I'm falling asleep in bed, I almost wake up and I'm like, whoa, yep. damn, I, I've missed something. You know, and I <laughs> do like a bit of a perimeter check and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I, I, I decided uh, quite a few years back I don't want to grow up. Well, I grew up. I don't want to carry on living in South Africa anymore. And and it's purely because of that. I don't want to like look over my shoulder for the rest of my life. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I've had enough of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I and it's not like all completely... doom and gloom. I know people are listening and they're like, oh fuck me, it can't be that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. We we, you know. We live probably a pretty sheltered life compared to a lot of South Africans, but at the same time, you can never be too sure. You know? yeah, I mean, like when bad things happen to people you know, then you know, like you got to yeah. look at it. You got to be realistic and be yeah, like, oh, fuck, it could, could happen. Yeah. It could really happen. You know, yeah. like that's the that's the realism of the situation. It could fucking happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and it's happened to people we know, like personally, like people have died and people have been raped. People, you know, like it's like fuck. It's all doom and gloom. It's terrible to speak about, but it's real. Like it's yeah. real, you know. Yeah. You don't want that happening that you to hear. you. Yeah. And now that I'm dating a girl from, you know, Ireland, she she has no business having to learn about this now. And like it's too late. It's too, you know, it's like no, it's something like uh, it's you nothing. Know, you know, you have to really experience it as a child and grow yeah, up. Yeah, man, with that you can't. I don't really want to bring her back to that. Means. Fucking hell! And now yeah. all of a sudden, I mean, it's it's so sad that one of the best veterinary universities in the world is in South Africa. And that's Tara's dream, you know, that's her, her dream is to be a vet, and like, I could take her there, but then at the same time, the veterinary university is amazing, but everything in between is a bit, like, foreign to her, if, if that makes sense. Worried. You'd always yeah, be worried. Yeah, you don't be worried. There's no f public transport, you can't get on a train or a bus to go anywhere. You have to get whatever. in the car, and as soon you have to drive. She doesn't know how to you drive. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like, it's just a whole new world, and it's just like, I think maybe it's better, we'll, we'll get to that later, maybe. Yeah. I'll visit the place as much as I can. Yeah. I yeah, don't want to live there. Bring her yeah. to your home, right? Of course, yeah, she's been there twice, and yeah. it was awesome. We had such a great time, and it's a really cool place to go visit and whatever. But it's a cool place to visit. Let's not live there. Let's. I'll leave yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like that with a yeah. lot of places. London, for example. I know tons of people that I know are all about London. They're mad about it. They're yeah. like, oh, it'll be one of the greatest, greatest places to live. Fuck no. Yes. Yeah, Fuck not for you. that yeah. shit. Yeah. I've been there on visits, mostly these days I just go there for whatever function, whether it's yeah. like, you know, a birthday meetup or I'm just traveling through to get to somewhere else. But honest to God, it's one of the most oppressive places I could ever yeah. imagine living. The weather's always shit. Yeah. It's, it's either cold and rainy or it's oppressively hot and humid. Yeah. 
people just don't really give you the time of day. Some people are really, really nice and polite, but only for as long as it takes for you to get your fucking croissant and then fuck off. Uh, Where is this? <laughs> London. 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 Uh, I went like, there when I was you're 17. You're out in the so. bumblefuck nowheres of London where it takes you an hour to get anywhere of any actual real importance. Or you live somewhere down in the center where you're paying through the teeth. You're literally selling your soul every month to pay your rent. All right, you guys. And you have to deal with the bumbling, hustling catastrophe of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just rubbing shoulders right. with you every day. All right. <laughs> what? All right. What? No, we're, 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 just chucking, we're, we're, we're throwing you off for a second. We're going to get... Oh, thank fuck. Okay, I was running out of things to talk about. <laughs> I, was, oh, I was about to say, yeah, we, we, we just like... We, 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 we had, yeah, we had just moved on to the slamming London part of the conversation. You know that it's only going downhill you're from here. You're going to lose so. all our London uh, viewers if you're going to keep up that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Enjoying nothing it? against Londoners, per se. I just Come couldn't on, deal with it myself. <laughs> Oh, he wants to film some of this. Kenny! Would you like to join me? I'll take a photo of you. Yeah, Tim, you jump in. You jump in and you let him take the photo. Come on, talk some shit. Kenny, come on. I thought you were saying after I finish this tea, I was like, you can do it. After I finish this tea, cigarette, mics and things. All right. We got a pledge for Kenny to join us.